Hi guys, Jamie from Boxing Life and welcome back to another Boxing List video. With the Olympics coming to an end, I wanted to put a list together of boxers who have won gold at the Olympics and then gone on to become world champion in the professional ranks. This list is mainly based off notable names, maybe with a few surprises thrown in too. This list is from 1952 all the way up until 2016. So on that note, let's get right into it. Number 1. Floyd Patterson, 1952 Helsinki Crazy to think how Floyd Patterson went from competing at middleweight and light heavyweight before winning a world title at heavyweight. Patterson would win the vacant world heavyweight championship with a fifth round KO of Archie Moore on November 30th, 1956. Patterson became the youngest ever world heavyweight champion at 21 years, 10 months and 26 days. His record was then surpassed by Mike Tyson, who then won the WBC Heavyweight Championship at 20 years old. Interesting fact, Patterson and Tyson both had the same trainer of Costi Amato. Number 2. Muhammad Ali, 1960, Rome Known as Cassius Clay at the time, Ali won gold in Rome in the light heavyweight division, finishing with an amateur record of 100 wins and only 5 losses. Ali would then turn professional that year when he moved up to heavyweight and really started to make a name for himself due to his charisma and character. The Greatest would then get his chance against Sonny Liston in 1964 to become heavyweight world champion. He won this fairly convincingly and then would go on to win in the rematch. Muhammad Ali would then go on to have one of the greatest careers at heavyweight with some of the most iconic battles with fellow Olympic gold medalists against the likes of George Foreman, Joe Frazier, and Floyd Patterson, who I just mentioned on this list. Number 3. Joe Frazier, Tokyo 1964 Another true legend of the sport is, of course, Smokin' Joe Frazier, who won Olympic gold four years after Muhammad Ali did. Turning professional, Frazier emerged as a top contender in the heavyweight division in the 1960s, before finally becoming heavyweight champion against Jimmy Ellis in 1970. He would soon after face against Muhammad Ali at Madison Square Garden, where the fight was labelled fight of the century, in which Frazier won. A couple years after this fight, Joe Frazier would then face up against George Foreman, where he would then lose his titles as heavyweight champion. This would be the final time Joe would hold any world title. Number 4. George Foreman, Mexico City, 1968 Nicknamed Big George in his boxing career, he had a 16-4 amateur record going into the Olympics in Mexico. Foreman still maintains to this day that winning the Olympic gold was the achievement he was most proud of. Despite this being his greatest moment in his eyes, Foreman had a tremendous professional career. Many forget how deadly he was in the ring before winning the WBA, WBC and ring heavyweight title against Joe Frazier. He would go on to face Muhammad Ali in their classic encounter in Zaire, where he would lose the titles to Ali in 1974. Foreman would then have three more attempts to win a world title again, losing to Evander Holyfield in 1991, Tommy Morrison in 1993, but finally became a two-time and also the oldest heavyweight champion by beating Michael Moore by KO. Number 5. Sugar Ray Leonard, 1976, Montreal. Ray Leonard is a true legend of the sport, and of course his status is one of the four kings, or fabulous four, he is also the only one of them to win an Olympic medal while also defeating all four in the pro ranks. In 1979, Leonard would win his first world title in the welterweight division against the talented Wilfred Benitez. Leonard would then go on to win world titles in five weight divisions, including lineal status in three weight divisions throughout his incredible career. Number 6. Michael Spinks, Montreal, 1976. Winning gold alongside Ray Leonard at the Montreal Olympics at middleweight, Michael Spinks looked to have a very promising career ahead of him. Once turning pro, Spinks competed in the light heavyweight division where he won his first world title in 1981. After dominating the division, Spinks would then move up to face heavyweight champion Larry Holmes, who he defeated twice. Spinks would then face a young 20-year-old Mike Tyson, who would go on to dominate the sport. This would also be Spink's last professional fight and his only defeat in his career. Number 7. Leon Spinks, 
Montreal, 1976. The older brother of Michael is, of course, Leon Spinks. He also won an Olympic gold in Montreal alongside his brother winning in the light heavyweight division. Leon didn't have as good a career as his brother Michael. However, just after eight fights, he would get his chance against an aging Muhammad Ali where he would win the heavyweight titles. However, Ali did get his revenge by winning the rematch. Spinks would then go on to have a very mixed career, but I guess by beating the greatest at your first world title shot cannot be considered a bad thing. Number 8. Pernell Whitaker, Los Angeles, 1984. One of the top boxers to come out of the 1984 Los Angeles Games was, of course, Sweet Pea. Pernell Whitaker was known for his southpaw stance and tremendous defensive skills and counter punching. Having failed at his first attempt to become world champion in 1988, he would soon bounce back in 1989 winning the IBF lightweight title. This is when Whitaker's career took off from there as he became a four weight world champion throughout his career, having won titles at lightweight, light welterweight, welterweight and even light middleweight. He was also undisputed lightweight and also held lineal lightweight and welterweight titles. Mark Breland, Los Angeles, 1984. Breland in more recent years is known for being the former trainer of Deontay Wilder, who threw in the towel during his bout with Tyson Fury. Wilder sacked and then accused the Olympic gold medalist of spiking water, which is just ridiculous. It's a shame because Breland has a very successful professional career as a two-time welterweight champion and does not deserve that type of disrespect in my opinion. He first became a world champion in 1987 and then again in 1989 where he made three successful title defences before losing to Aaron Davis. Number 10. Meldrick Taylor, Los Angeles, 1984. Taylor won gold in his home country at the 1984 Los Angeles Games as he competed at featherweight. That same year, he would go on to turn professional and he would go on to have a very successful career becoming a two-weight world champion, winning the IBF light welterweight title in 1988 against McGirt and then the WBA welterweight title against Aaron Davis. Number 11, Oscar De La Hoya, Barcelona, 1992. Back in the 90s, Oscar took back gold from the Barcelona Olympics. Known quickly as the golden boy soon after, he'd quickly become the face of boxing at the time. De La Hoya won his first world title in 1994 for the WBO junior lightweight title. He then went on to amass an incredible 11 world titles in 6 weight divisions, including lineal championship in 3 of those weight classes. Number 12. Vladimir Klitschko, Atlanta, 1996. After winning gold at the Atlanta Games in the super heavyweight division, big things were expected of Vladimir Klitschko in the world of boxing. That same year after winning gold, the Ukrainian would turn professional and start his illustrious career. After a fairly straightforward career with only one defeat, Klitschko would go on to win the WBO heavyweight title against Chris Bird. However, after two defeats a few years later to Corey Sanders and Lamont Brewster, Klitschko would then hire the services of legendary trainer Emmanuel Stewart to get him back to the top. Klitschko also amassed records for the longest heavyweight title reign of all time of 4,382 days as world heavyweight champion. He's also got the record for most fighters beaten at World Heavyweight Championships, that is 23. He also holds records for the most wins and title defences of the Unified Championship. Now you can understand why they called it the Klitschko era. Klitschko did however end his career with two defeats to the two current heavyweight champions in Tyson Fury, of course Anthony Joshua. Number 13, Guillermo Rigondeaux, Sydney 2000 and Athens 2004. Nicknamed El Chackle, or The Jackal, he is a dual Olympic gold medalist, regarded as one of the most decorated in amateur boxing, with a record of 475 fights and 12 losses. After Rigondeaux's defection in 2009, he turned professional and remained undefeated for almost 9 years. He's a two-weight world champion, having held the WBA bantamweight title since 2020. Previously was the unified WBA, WBO and Ring Magazine super bantamweight champion between 2013 and 2017. He also challenged once for the WBO super featherweight title in 2017 against Vasil Lomachenko. However, that is an experience Rigondeaux will want to forget. Number 14. Yurikas Gamboa, Athens 2004. 
The Cuban who won gold at flyweight in the 2004 Athens Olympics has most recently fought the likes of upcoming stars Gervonta Davis and Devin Haney. Gamboa had a very decorated amateur career and was known for his blistering speed. When turning professional, he unified the featherweight world titles, having held the WBA and IBF titles between 2009 and 2011. When he was in his prime, he did move up to lightweight to challenge Terence Crawford for the WBO lightweight title. However, it was unsuccessful as Crawford had a convincing win. Number 15, Andre Ward, Athens 2004. The American had a fantastic amateur and professional career, winning multiple titles at all levels. He fought at two weight categories, super middleweight and light heavyweight, picking up and retiring with an impressive undefeated boxing record of 32 victories and 16 KOs. Ward defeated the likes of Carl Froch, Mikael Kessler, Chad Dawson, Arthur Abraham, all throughout his career. The American finally decided to hang up his gloves in 2017 after retaining his world title belts against the much feared Sergei Kovalev in their light heavyweight rematch. Number 16, James DeGaulle, Beijing 2008. Chunky, as he was known in his pro career. DeGaulle is maybe a boxer some of you might have forgotten about, as he won gold in the middleweight division in the Beijing Olympics. Soon after, DeGaulle turned professional competing in the super middleweight division, where he would quickly rise up the ranks, winning British and European titles. DeGaulle would eventually get his world title shot against a talented American Andre Darrell, where he won the IBF super middleweight title. Number 17, Vasyl Lomachenko, Beijing 2008, London 2012. Loma's amateur career is regarded as one of the best ever with an incredible record of 396 wins and only one defeat. The Ukrainian was truly unstoppable at amateur level, picking up seven golds and one silver. He would then turn professional with top rank and would quickly want to become a world champion in his first professional fight. This wasn't to be However, he made an impressive debut at featherweight in 2013. For his second professional fight, he would get the chance against Ferretin Orlando Salido, however lost in a controversial split decision. However, this would not stop Loma, as he would go on to dominate every boxer he's pretty much come up against. He first won the WBO featherweight title in his next fight against the highly rated Gary Russell Jr. becoming world champion in just three fights. Lomachenko would then go on to become the fastest to win world titles in three weight divisions, which is a truly remarkable achievement. Number 18, Anthony Joshua, London 2012. After winning gold in his home nation at the London 2012 Olympics, Joshua was destined for stardom after he signed with Matchroom Boxing. After a quick rise in the heavyweight ranks, Joshua picked up his first world title against Charles Martin in 2017 before unifying the titles against Vladimir Klitschko. Soon after, he defeated WBO champion from New Zealand, Joseph Parker. However, he did lose his titles once against Andy Ruiz. However, managed to win back his titles to become a two-time heavyweight world champion after defeating him in the rematch. Number 19, Oleksandr Usyk, London 2012. Usyk amassed an incredible amateur record of 335 for 15, and it's no wonder he has gone on to become one of the most talented boxers in the sport to date. Starting his amateur career at middleweight, as Usyk grew up into his body, he slowly became an amateur heavyweight. Most notably, Usyk won gold medals at World Championships in 2011 and of course the London 2012 Olympic. After this, the Ukrainian would then turn professional and compete in the cruiserweight division. He first won his world title in 2016 against the Pole Glowacki and then would enter the World Boxing Super Series where he eventually became the first cruiserweight in history to hold all four major world championships and was also the first man to lift the Muhammad Ali trophy. Number 20, Katie Taylor, London 2012. The soft-spoken Irish star Katie Taylor became an Irish hero at London 2012 winning gold. She was part of the first women who were allowed to competitively box for the first time at the Olympics in 2012. In her amateur career, she won a total of 8 golds through various amateur competitions, making her Ireland's most decorated boxer with a record of 173 victories, 12 losses and 1 draw. Taylor then turned pro a few years after the Olympics, signing with Eddie Hearn's matchroom boxing where she won her first world title in the Joshua vs Takam undercard. Since then, she has gone on to become undisputed champion in the lightweight division, making her one of the best ever boxers from Ireland. 21. Clarissa Shields London 2012 Rio 2016 
Another gold Olympic champion is Clarissa Shields, who has truly impressed since turning professional in women's boxing. After turning pro, Shields won her first world title a year after turning pro and has gone on to win titles in three weight divisions so far. Shields is also the only boxer in history, female or male, to hold all four major world titles in boxing in two different weight classes. Nicola Adams, London 2012, and Rio 2016. Like Clarissa Shields in this list, Nicola Adams is also a dual Olympic gold champion, winning at both London 2012 and Rio in 2016. Adams without a doubt had a very decorated amateur career and is without a doubt Britain's greatest ever amateur female boxer, winning eight golds and four silvers across multiple international tournaments. After Rio, Adams turned pro in 2017, where she signed with Frank Warren. She would initially win the WBO interim flyweight title, but then was elevated. She unfortunately had to retire due to an eye injury that with further impact her eye would most likely lead to imperable damage or even permanent vision loss, which is such a shame. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this boxing list. If I've missed any gold medalists out, make sure to comment below and let me know. I'd be happy to do a part two of this video. If you want other content like this, make sure to comment below and let me know if there's a particular topic you want me to cover. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps out the channel and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.